If you want to make self portraits that look like this, this, or this, watch the rest of this video. What's up, y'all? My name is Trevor Went. I'm a visual artist raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I make art to challenge perspectives and give hope to marginalized and oppressed peoples. And a lot of people have asked me how I made this portrait, self-portrait, how did you do this? And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight on how exactly I made this happen. So let's get into it. So first off, folks, we are going to just jump into this. You're gonna need a studio lighting setup in order to execute a, a portrait like this, or you can have some sort of like cheap constant lights. But I did this with studio strobes. If you want some information on how I shoot self portraits with studio strobes, go ahead and hit the link that's going to be somewhere up here. It's going to pop up. That is an old video that I dropped a self portrait tutorial on how I shoot in studio self portraits. And so you can get a little bit of insight on how I did that there. And yeah, otherwise, how I would break this down for you is that I use two lights. So this is light one. These are both Alien B, uh, or really Palsy Buff Digi B 800s. And both of these joints are outfitted for this shoot with the nine inch reflector that comes with it. That's where you see this little silver situation here. And then all this other beautiful stuff is cheap stuff off Amazon and you know stuff that you have lying around your house that you can execute something that looks like this through so i was looking to do something that was kind of on the edge of like using gobos or go betweens which is what this is uh, to kind of create texture in my image texture on my face texture on my background etc and so what i did here was i just took a piece of cardboard or poster board rather and i just cut out slits into it like a window blind in order to get some texture on the background uh, which you've seen in some of those images that i just showed you earlier and then since i didn't have any barn doors what i did was i got creative and i utilized just cheap you know moving boxes and i clamped which you can see kind of right here i clamped the moving boxes to the light stand and anything that I could around it in order to try to control the light as much as I could and make it funky and get really weird because that's the type of lighting and stuff that I like. And so you can kind of see, um, you know, how that, that kind of plays out. You can see the texture on the background back here. And then we'll talk about this light in a second. But so here's another look at it. Here's a look at the cardboard box is a little bit better. You know, you can see the situation here of the gobo and how that's clamped like here and here and then right here all this stuff back here is my black backdrop and this backdrop uh it, it you know black is a black backdrop because of the color of it but also the amount of light that i have on it and so you know i'm gonna mess with this a little bit and add some texture to it because that's what i wanted to do and so that is the setup there and then Let's talk about this second light. Or before we move on, actually, let's talk about the settings of this light. So I had this at negative 2.3 stops. And so um, you can Google what stops are. If you wanna get a little bit more in depth in that, you can check out my Patreon page, which is linked below, uh, where I'll talk about you know more in depth photography kind of teaching stuff um, and, and video teaching stuff in my series, The Corner. But within this, we're seeing again you know negative 2.3 stops from like the brightest point that this this uh strobe can shoot at so i'm using that um to it's it's going to be lower than what my main light is because i want the background not to be brighter than my subject um so yeah that that's coming from the side just one side and hitting the backdrop at an angle then next up we have my key light. And so my key light was again, another just strobe that was shooting through in the nine inch reflector, you know, and I'm, I've got a little piece of like cut out gel that's sitting on the inside of it with some really cheap masking tape that's holding it in there. Cause it didn't have any sort of gel holder or anything like that. So again, let's get creative. Um, my camera is sitting kind of next to that. And then I've got another kind of one slit gobo cause I was just getting creative and testing stuff out. And this didn't work exactly how I wanted it to, but you know, it, 
how I initially envisioned it, but I loved what I ended up with. And so sometimes you just kind of got to go with the flow um, and, and kind of make some stuff happen. And then I was kind of playing with using my V flat, which is just this, this is a homemade version of a V flat um, that I found some DIY tutorial on. And V flats are generally like kind of these sorts of things that you see in studios where one side is black and one side is white. And so one side's reflective and one side's can be for negative fill, which gives you more contrast. And so I just needed a little bit of bounce from this. And then I also needed like a little bit of bounce from my key light, but I also needed it to bounce this little aperture MC right here so that my camera could have something to focus on because it needed to see me in the dark and have something to focus on so that I, you know, could get an image that was sharp because yeah, no light does not equal something focusing on a person. And so, yeah, you can kind of see that it's set up really weird off of, this is literally a microphone stand. <laughs> That's how I'm holding that there. Cause I didn't have any good stands at the time. And then I've got another like cheap Amazon basic stand, like holding all this stuff up and um, might add some sandbags on it. Can't really remember. don't think I did. Um, and stands might have been or sandbags might have been out of my budget at the time um and so then you can kind of see another angle of it and kind of how that's that's popping up but yeah so v flat here a uh, little cheap cardboard cutout for a go gobo here light sitting back here camera is right there and then you know had to completely destroy the room I was living in at the time in order to make this possible because uh yeah it, it the room wasn't laid out for me to have this little studio section right here and so um yeah you can kind of see just really quick where the camera specifically was a little bit further back behind this and yeah that's how i was sitting in order to make that a possibility and so with that you can make stuff like this and so i had that light kind of hitting me and try to control it as much as i could with that sort of setup and then yeah i was using this sort of texture in the background and so you might be wondering how the heck is this light purple like did you have a purple gel on this or something no that is a color grade people I threw purple-ish blue into the shadows and that's how I made this. And then, you know, edited my photos in a certain way in order to execute this stuff like this. And keep in mind that I said that this light, the key light was gonna be brighter than this background light. And that's because I need, you know, my face to, to stand out away from the background. So I'm not sure what the exact number it was set to, but when you think about studio photography, just think about, think about ratios. What is the ratio you're trying to create between your lights, your, your background light and your key light? Like what is the exposure of that? How bright is that in comparison to how bright this is? And so when you think about ratios, um, it'll help you to understand how you want to light something. And so let's just go through some of the other images from this. And so, yeah, same thing. Color grade is hitting the background uh, where I'm just adding a little bit of, of uh, greens and yellows into the, the mids and into the shadows in order to create that look and leaving that red and probably throwing a little bit of that in there too. And so you can kind of see a different color grade of the same image. And then here's uh, an image where I took off, where I took off the, the, the red light and I just focused on that backlight. And so you can kind of see like this is when it's white balance just for that. And so you can see like, it's, you know, it's, it's not a daylight balance light. It's a flashbulb balance light, but you understand like it's not green or, or yellow. It's not this, this color. And so I'm playing with, I'm playing with grain and stuff like that to kind of create this look and this texture that's happening back here. Um, but yeah, I really loved what I, what I got out of this. I love how the hard light created this really hard shadow right here of this, this earring and made that shadow on my face. There's just really interesting stuff that's happening with this. Um, and then it's going the wrong direction, but yeah. And so you saw this one earlier, really dreamy, really interesting stuff just from a really simple setup. And I, and I probably had as well, I didn't mention it. I had a black pro mist one eighth that was on the front of the lens to kind of create some, some blooming of the highlights and kind of soften the image just a little bit.
And so with all that being said, the lighting plot for this shot would lay out just like this. Like I said, background light in the back left corner, then the backdrop in the back. You can see where I sat as the subject and then where the key light was and then where my camera was as well and where the gobos would sit as well. And so, yeah, that's it. If y'all have any other questions about this image or any other images I've made self portraits of, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to make my way to those and do some other short videos like this where I kind of break down how I executed a lighting setup. And yeah, I'll catch y'all on the flip. Be easy, be safe, peace.